Hey guys, Cannondale sent us a, a new bike to check out. This is the Treadwell Neo EQ, which stands for equipped with the fenders, the rack, the headlight, uh, remixedy. Okay, so mixedy frame style is this mid-step, very approachable. If you're someone who has hip or knee sensitivity, you can easily mount this bike. And it's especially useful if you have a rear rack, but interestingly, this bike doesn't seem to have bosses for adding a rear rack. and. Further interestingly, it has this seat post binder that does have threaded bosses. So I'm like, you know, wh where where would you mount the support arms if you did want to have a rear rack? I'm a big fan of rear racks because uh, a front rack like this, as you steer, see it turns with you and then that changes at the feel as you're steering. And this thing is only rated to like 10 kilograms, not very much, whereas rear racks are usually rated to 25 kilograms, roughly 55 pounds. So for me, that was perplexing. Also, just the interface, like how you change assist levels and stuff. I'll get into that later. Um, it's a cool bike. I mean, it looks really cool. Some of the functionality is compromised. Like if we look at this sort of fabric seat that they've got here, it, it, it's really comfortable, but it's not like waterproof, I guess. I mean, I, I, get, I don't know if water is going to damage it, but it soaks up water is what I'm trying to communicate. So if this is left outside and we are in Vancouver right now where it rains, and that's just going to be wet when you come back to your bike. So of course you could do like the grocery sack with a rubber band or something to try to keep it from getting wet. I do like that it has a handle, although that's a bit compromised because of the light mounting position and also because they ran this wire through that seat tube or seat post and then down through the seat tube. It's a suspension seat post with about 40 millimeters of travel, but I took it out, 31.6 millimeter diameter, by the way, if you want to replace that. When I took it out on the bottom, I was looking for bolts to change like the preload setting. So you can stiffen that up if you're someone's a bit heavier or loosen it up if you're relatively lightweight. And it just didn't seem to have the adjustability. So it's like they're trying, they're really trying. And I mean, this is a nice light. It's got two LEDs, it's adjustable angle. Uh, however, if you're wearing like a long coat, a jacket, and your butt's right here, the jacket usually kind of goes down behind you. And I've seen it where the jacket will block that rear light. So, you know, kind of a bummer there. The headlight is very nice as well. Got this special mounting point, which goes on the stem. It's got the side windows. It's got that kind of angle so that it doesn't shine up into oncoming traffic. Really nice. Um, I, I'm a fan of that. And it points where you steer and it's up high. But imagine that you've got like a bag of puppies or maybe you've got some groceries or just whatever in this basket it wouldn't take much to block that headlight. So again, it's just kind of like, hmm, really interesting handlebar. This is kind of BMX inspired. I, I like how it's sort of a mid rise or almost high rise here. And you could potentially mount some things on this flat bar, but it's not really standard uh, width for, uh, for a normal handlebar. So if you're trying to mount your phone here, you might have a difficult time finding a mount that actually fits this uh, perfectly. And there are no USB charging ports or anything. This bike, is powered by like the e-bike motion drive system, uh, which is made by Molly. And Molly recently created a drive system in tandem with Specialized. It's their SL Super Light Mid Drive, and I really like that that drive system. This is a hub motor version. It's not a mid drive, so it's it's not going to really benefit from your drivetrain. It's just a 250 watt hub motor that's rated at 40 newton meters, kind of standard, lightweight. In fact, the whole bike is roughly 40 pounds. The motor itself is about 4.6. And then the battery pack, which is in that down tube, weighs about 2.8 pounds. It, the battery's, you know, 36 volt. I think it's 6.9 amp hours. So it's like 248 watt hours, roughly 250. So we're looking at like 250 watt hours, 250 watt motor, 40 newton meters of torque. This is the kind of performance that I would expect to get from like an aftermarket kit or something. And really it's, it's kind of European in Europe the class one limitation is about 250 watts whereas in north america in canada it's 500 in america us it's like 750. so this is going to be kind of a light touch <laughs> and a lot of times i'll be reviewing a mid drive that's rated 250 with like the, with like the bosch mid drive uh, motor system and i'll say well don't worry even though it's rated at 250 it's very powerful and that's partially because you can leverage the cassette back here if you go to one of those bigger sprockets that's a lower gear you're going to give the motor a mid drive of high mechanical advantage but with just a, a hub motor it doesn't get that like this is your one gear the width of the wheel and these are 27.5 inch uh, so 650b and and that's kind of interesting you know instead of 26 which is 
sort of the smallest, and you see those on a lot of older mountain bikes, or 28 700C, which is like a, a typical city bike, they went with something in between. And I think that's kind of nice because then they got these higher volume tires that give you a little bit more stability and comfort. And the tread on these is, again, it's kind of a hybrid tread. I really like that they've got a black hub, black spokes, black rims, really nice stuff. Nice aluminum alloy frame, rigid fork, and that allows them to mount this rack really well right here, just at the, the front of the fork and then down here on, on the stays. And, you know, again, bamboo deck, like this is nice. It's cute, but in terms of functionality, it feels like there are some trade-offs. Um, other innovations that I noticed are, are these like bumpers right here. So this like armor that they've added, it's just rubber. So if you're at a bike rack and someone like bumps into you, almost like car doors where someone opens into you in a crowded parking lot, it's gonna keep your fame, frame looking nice. And this is a beautiful gloss black frame. Uh, I, I wanna highlight this 38 tooth chain ring here with a nice double-sided aluminum alloy chain guide. Okay, so that is great. It's, it means your chain's not gonna hop off and it also means you can ride in a skirt or pants like this and when you're pedaling your pants aren't going to brush up against that chain and get greasy or get snagged so i appreciate that they got a clear slap guard sticker here so the paint won't get chipped and then back to the alivio this is a pretty nice derailleur and the cassette itself you know it's even the shifter it's shimano acera nine speeds that's a lot there's a lot more speeds here so you can get that really comfortable pedal cadence 11 to 36 tooth it's a it's a good bicycle right like i think that's what cannondale is really known for and i'm just really amazed you go to their website and they have just tons of electric bikes and almost every single other bike uses the bosch mid-drive system and i've reviewed several of them some of the mountain bikes in the past they're really growing their their lineup but these sort of city hybrid bikes and then one road bike are now using this molly e-bike motion drive system so i don't know the bike itself aluminum alloy fenders they're kind of a brushed alloy the support arms for them not my favorite you know if these little rubber things come off it's actually pretty sharp and thankfully they aren't coming off very easily but you know if it does get snagged that's just kind of kind of sharp and it just looks ugly to me compared to some of the other fender supports that like tuck under the fender itself they don't stick up like this i mean this is this is somewhat adjustable but ideally they just get it dialed in at the factory and then you don't ever have to adjust it that would be my preference and that's what a lot of other um, companies do we don't have quick release on the front wheel or the rear so you might need some tools to get this off uh, i was asking these guys you know how how does the motor and the motor controller respond to your pedaling. This is a class one electric bike, meaning pedal assist only up to 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour. And I was looking for like a cadence sensor here at the bottom bracket. That's where it usually is, but I couldn't find it. And then I read the manual and stuff and I discovered that there's actually a sensor back there. It's tucked in and it sort of measures a magnet that passes on, on like the cassette spindle. It's really interesting. I can see the wire from here but I haven't taken the rear wheel off. And I guess they said it's a 40 pulse cadence sensor in the rear, and it really sense, senses that speed when you're pedaling. If you're just coasting and that cassette isn't spinning, then you're not gonna get uh, pedal assist activation. 40 pulse is pretty responsive. In practice, as I've actually been riding it, it seems kind of normal, right? I start pedaling, it kicks on pretty quickly, and it, it shuts off pretty quickly, but not immediately when I stop. And because this doesn't have motor inhibitors on either of the brake levers, you just have to wait. You know, so you, I, I have actually had moments where I was like pulling the brakes and I just kept moving my, my feet a little bit and I was sort of slowing down my cadence, but I wasn't fully stopping. And maybe I was just trying to get the comfortable foot position and I'm braking and the motor's still going because of those 40 pulse cadence sensors back there. So for me, that was kind of a letdown to be honest with you uh, most of the time with cadence sensors you do have to have like motor inhibiting brake levers and i don't know if there's really a governing body that forces that but for me it's something i do like to see of course they've simplified this there are a lot fewer wires really nice aesthetic up here and these are very capable brakes you've got three finger levers adjustable reach tektro 160 millimeter disc brake rotors which is like okay you know they, they could be a little bit bigger but for a city bike like this it's going 20 miles per hour it's lightweight I guess that's okay. It was just a bit of a disconnect for me. It was like, okay, I guess, you know, with with a kind of a more efficient, weaker motor, they didn't feel like they needed the, the motor inhibiting brake levers. So yeah, down here to the pedals, 
they're kind of unique plastic platform with these little nubs and then a little bit of grip tape right in the middle kickstand probably know what i'm going to say about this it's mounted right there in the middle of the bike versus somewhere back here and because of that if you're you're taking this bike away from a rack or out of your garage as you back back up like this boom you get pedal lock like that and, and you can't even like stow the kickstand you have to kind of manually walk it forward like that and then stow the kickstand so for me there's room for improvement although it is adjustable length which is nice and it does match the bike it's really really again aesthetically this bike is awesome and i love that it comes in two sizes this one says size large but i measured it at like 17 and a half inches and i was surprised because usually that's kind of a medium you know size and i don't know the with the mixed e frame style i can't really say how much different the frame is than than the high step version of this so here is the charger this is a two amp charger 1.1 pounds super lightweight i really like it you can see it has the e-bike motion labeling on it and then this plastic end piece it'd be nice if this was metal maybe a little bit bigger or just more durable you can see that it would plug right here right in the middle of the frame and there is some sort of like spinning lock mechanism right here like this wing it's not really a nut but it's like a wing tightener <laughs> and i i didn't really dial that in very much and i just kind of like plug it in it stayed plugged in it charged the light changed colors from like green to red or red to green once it was charged and it, it got the job done and since the battery isn't removable you can't charge it separate from the bike so if you have to park this thing outside the battery could get really hot if it's a hot day out or really cold and, and that's hard on the, the chemistry ideally this would be in a, a cool dry location um, so that's kind of a bummer you know again it's 40 pounds so you could lift it up carry it up the stairs uh, that kind of thing but you just might not have a lot of room inside your your house or near a plug sometimes it's nice to be able to remove the battery so that's one of the trade-offs with a lot of these integrated battery e-bikes and then down here check it out we got a little secret bottle cage bosses it looks like it'd be pretty close to that front fender you might need like a side mounting bottle cage or something or just a folding lock you could probably get you know i'm trying to think of where else sometimes they have these like strap on bottle holster things that you can get from sks you could put right there It'd be a little bit easier to reach than down here so at least they got them that's nice but it's not super functional and same thing with the basket again it's like you, you could put a bottle up here but it might be rattling around maybe you get some bungee cables or something to to just to dial this in a little bit more all in all the bike is fairly comfortable upright body position you got the suspension seat post which sort of makes up for not having any other suspension this is just a lightweight efficient e-bike and it is it's very helpful to have any support there are a lot of hills around here you can see the bridge in the distance you know this is we got like burnaby and then vancouver way off in the distance so there are a lot it's a very hilly landscape and having a, a drive system like this is nice and maybe having a, such a simple display versus an lcd or something up here that could get bumped maybe that's okay and once you figure out how to use this bike it's really not too bad so i'm going to jump into um, the display and then maybe the app a little bit and explain how those work okay we're looking down at the iWalk one and this is all part of the e-bike motion e-bike setup and that's that's what you interact with so you might have your hands up here the brakes whatever to change assist levels you need to like take a hand off and touch this thing so to power the bike on initially you just press it once get this kind of white or gray ring and then did you see how it turned green for a minute that meant you're in the first level of assist and then it turned like purple or blue because it was looking for my phone because i have bluetooth enabled and i'm going to show you the app so let's say we want to go to the second level of assist you tap once you tap again and see how it turned orange okay now if we want to go to the third level of assist tap once tap again and we're on red now you can kind of keep tapping and circle around so there's white green orange red so again three levels of assist and they just loop like that uh, if you want to turn the lights on it took me a minute to figure this out you tap it once and then you hold it and then it turns like yellow and there we go got the headlight again pretty impressed with this light it's yeah it kind of aims down and keeps you visible from the side which which is really nice because it doesn't have the reflective sidewalls or really any other reflective accents that i've seen considering it's a, a black bike and then there's your your rear light just remember try not to not try not to block it and keep your your jacket from hanging over it that's kind of it i, I haven't figured out how to do like walk mode i did take a picture of 
all of the like manuals and stuff because I had to spend more time with this bike than a lot of the other electric bikes just to try to get all the details. And I reached out to Cannondale repeatedly trying to figure out just, just to get like the battery specs and stuff and like the motor specs because it was a little bit it just wasn't like up up front and this is a new drive system for me so again not necessarily bad but it just took a little bit more screwing around once you know how to use that display it's just a matter of short clicks multiple clicks or the the click and then hold click and you get the lights and stuff when you're ready to turn it off you just hold this for a long press and nothing really happens you just have to know like okay and then you let go and now it'll turn off Okay, so that that was also kind of confusing to me. I was sort of wishing that I could hold it for like three seconds and it would go dark, but it doesn't. You just keep holding it and then you have to let go. And when you do, bingo, it turns off. Um, while I'm down here, look at this nice uh, headset. It's just got that, that flat top spacer and then I don't know if this is 20 and then three fives right there. So it's it's a really nice rise. I was trying to figure out what's going on with this little rubberized thing and maybe that just comes back to this custom light mount on the front the cables are a little bit exposed right here keep that in mind the manuals and everything have a lot of warnings like don't spray the bike and don't submerge the bike i don't know how sensitive it is but obviously you should be able to ride it in the rain and i think even that would the the instructions were like don't ride in the rain but that's the e-bike motion stuff compared to the cannondale stuff so in terms of reliability and stuff again i welcome your feedback i love that they've got these locking grips with the semi-ergonomic bulge right here and sort of the the ribbed um, grips and I guess I guess that's it so now if we wanted to look at the app I've already got it going here and you can see that it really just shows the power like in terms of watts how hard the motor is working at the top right and then the battery percentage and mine says 95% because I've been riding around and then speed and miles per hour and then the lower left you get the assist level so it's just a number it says one right now and I haven't figured out how to actually change that using the app. I think you, you need to reach back down and press that button, the iWalk 1, <laughs> on, on the bike. So again, in terms of convenience, there isn't like an easy to reach button pad or something. And that's a bit of a compromise. This app can be used without this bike. You can use this just on any bike. And it has like GPS. You can save your trips and get some other feedback. But when you use it with... Uh, an e-bike motion enabled bike, you do get a little bit more feedback. And I think it even has a heart rate monitor integration so you can get some of that fitness data. So that's about it. I'm gonna hop on this bike, take it up to the highest level of assist. Temperature 57 degrees. Can you hear that? It's, it's like giving me all this audio, um, which I might turn off the app because that could be kind of annoying. You can change that in the settings, but... Speed zero. It's giving me 91% humidity. 57 degrees out. Wow. It really, it really gives you a lot of feedback. So let me just mute that. There we go. And now we can ride the bike. And um, the sun is coming out. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to ride across the grass. It's something I like to do to see how loud these bikes are. Like, is the chain bouncing around a lot? Is Are the fenders making noise? The basket's empty, so that shouldn't be a problem. Here we go. Pretty quiet. There we go. Not too bad. I can do a little bit of the, the hands free riding. Again, there's just more weight up here. They've got it balanced pretty well, um, but it's just what happens when you have a rack. I'm going to coast down this hill right here and just try the no hands again. Yeah, it's just, it's sort of slower. There's more weight, but it does track nicely. I'm not getting speed wobble or anything, which is great. I like the mixed frame style because it's sturdier than like a single tube, um, like step through bike, which might be slightly more approachable, but this is just a little bit, a little bit stiffer, gives you a better uh, ride quality. And now we'll climb this hill. It's a moderate hill. No problem. Like I'm not having to stand up and this would definitely be work if I was not on an electric bike, I'd be, shifting down you know right now i'm like in the fourth gear feels fine shift through a little bit here going up to five six see my my pedal cadence slows the motor doesn't get any mechanical advantage from my shifting um and you know one of the the drawbacks here of having a class one electric bike with a hub motor a lot of the other hub motor 
e-bikes I'm seeing, you know, the key is they're really just going for money savings or they have a, a throttle. So in this case, you're paying a little bit extra because it's a nicer bike with a, a good network of dealers and we don't have a throttle. So it's more about efficiency and weight savings. Back up here to the shifters, I, I wish they would gone with Dior because a Sarah, you've got the one-way trigger, meaning I can only pull it, I can't push it. And I like to just use my thumb for shifting. I don't really like to have to use my, my pointer finger because a lot of times I have that up on the brake lever. So for me, it's a minor thing that probably doesn't cost much, but it's a little bit of a, something you can kind of not really notice when you're getting a bike and then you have to adapt how you shift gears. Pretty smooth. Okay guys, from here you can see that awesome chain guide, 38 tooth steel chain ring, no narrow wide or anything, it's just a regular chain ring. And then back here we've got 11 to 36 tooth, nine speed cassette, pretty nice. I'm definitely a fan of that. That's a, that's a lot of gears and a pretty wide range, which means climbing is gonna be a little bit easier with that, that 36 tooth sprocket. So let's hop on. I'm gonna be in the highest level of assist just so you can really hear that motor activating. Really smooth brakes. Everything's working great. The bike feels very tight. And the derailleur is pretty nice. You know, we've got Shimano, Turney, Altus, Acera, Alivio, and then Dior. So, you know, four levels, that's, that's good. It's just gonna shift a little smoother, maybe be a little bit lighter weight, and it's performing great as you'd expect. Okay guys, now we're on a very steep hill. Like it's already incline and I'm in the lowest gear. That's the best way to start. Definitely need to pedal for this. Um, in part because there's no throttle, but also just because the motor's really not gonna be able to handle this all on its own. I weigh 135 pounds, I'm about 5'9", so keep that in mind. Uh, the neat thing about a cadence sensor, whether it's at the bottom bracket or in this case back at the cassette, is you don't necessarily need to push really hard. As long as you're moving those cranks, the motor gets a signal to go. It's like on or off, and really the power is controlled by the that iWalk 1 you know, display panel button pad thing up at, up at the front. So for someone with knee sensitivity, you do need to push to get the bike going and to get those cranks moving, but at a quarter or half a turn, the motor kicks in and that's where you could relax unless you're on a really steep hill, like I'm gonna try to demonstrate. So I'm in the highest level of assist. I'm seated right now and that motor is struggling. And I can do it. I mean, I'm not hurting my knees or anything, but to really make this thing go, I'm gonna need to kind of stand up, get some more momentum, then I could shift gears. There we go. And both me and the motor are gonna be a lot more comfortable once we have that momentum. So it's just kind of a tip for you. Hope it helps. All in all, the motor does a great job. It's way easier than if it was just me pedaling it's just not the world's most powerful motor. It's a little bit more of an active e-bike. Well, it was really interesting looking at this bike. Uh, just coming back to some of the trade-offs, having these 650 by 47B tires, they're, they're nice, but I didn't see puncture protection marked anywhere on here. I also don't see reflective sidewall stripes. And for a black bike, you know, again, everything matches, it's beautiful, but you might not be as visible. And having sort of a limited capacity battery pack that really isn't easy to remove. I, I'm not, I haven't tried to remove it. I don't think you're really supposed to. And then no way that I'm aware of to add like a range extender, uh, an additional battery capacity just means you might want to bring that, that charger all the time, which is, it's a nice charger. It's very lightweight. It's not the fastest, but with a lower capacity battery, that's kind of fine. And at this price point, you know, a name brand bike, Cannondale, I've known about these guys forever, and they are carried through shops. So you go in, you get a little bit of customer support, maybe some uh, warranty support. I think it's like one year comprehensive uh, with lifetime on the frame. And you know, they can do tune-ups and flat fixes and help you out that way. 
for 2300 bucks for the non-EQ version or 2750 as shown here, EQ equipped, it's a decent price point. I mean, for me, $450 difference, these are nice fenders, um, you know, and the, the basket's okay. The headlight is like a real win for me, but 450 seems kind of steep for, for those upgrades. Um, this was an interesting bike for me. It's nice to see more and more electric bikes that look like traditional analog or acoustic bikes. That's cool, like more people can ride, you blend in, it's very stealthy. The display, once you figure it out, it's not too bad. You just kind of get on this thing and go. It doesn't rattle a whole lot. It's relatively comfortable, if not a little wet. Um, so anyway, I have all the specs and stuff as usual back at electricbikereview.com. I appreciate your feedback, your corrections. If maybe I got a detail wrong or they update something like this, I, I love to hear from you guys, especially if you've bought something like this and you've enjoyed using it for a while. Back at the side, I have a comparison tool. So you can compare this to some of the other lightweight electric bikes. Kind of reminded me of the old Faraday bicycles, which got sold to the Pong Group, and now I, I don't think they're making bikes um, anymore, at least that I'm, I'm aware of. And you know the specialized SL, like the the Turbo Vado SL, another lightweight, really clean, integrated electric bike. You can compare these and determine which one's best for you. That's back at the site, along with the forums and stuff. Um, I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. I hope I see you out there riding someday, and we'll see you on the next one.